Hello! Well, now that I'm making videos weekly, I suppose I have to fiddle with the format a bit to keep things interesting. Nah, who am I kidding? I'm just going to stick something on the sofa and talk about it as usual. And this week it's going to be a vaguely obscure video games console from many moons ago, which I imagine most of you won't have seen or possibly even heard of. This was voted for by the people on Twitter, so if you want some of that vague future video influence and action, follow me on Twitter information there. Or don't. I don't care. I don't get any money from it. Right, this is what this is. Well, actually, this is the box of the Vectrex, which is a mighty built-in screened video game system from 1982. Well, released in America in 1982, uh, near the end of the year, I think. Came out over here in 1983 sometime, and was off the market by early 1984. You can partially thank Atari and their fantastic video game collapse for that, you know where they buried all those E.T. cartridges in the desert like bloody lunatics. Anyway, Vectrex. Yes, it is an old games console. You've probably worked that bit out. What you probably haven't worked out is that it's very, very odd. For starters, the screen that's built in, you'll notice is in portrait rather than landscape format, which is all a bit strange. What you can't notice from it, although you could possibly get an idea from that screenshot, is that all the graphics are displayed as vectors rather than bitmaps which basically means instead of being made up of little pixels, they're all made up of lines. One of the uh, main results of this was that the Vectrex had bloody astonishing looking uh, visuals for the time. Everything was super smooth and silky and really impressive. Also, it was really bloody expensive, if I remember. I've only ever seen one back in the day. Uh, one of my friends had one, and we used to play games on it, like you will see later. But anyway, I'm supposed to be talking about the box. Sorry. Let's see what they've written on it. Unique built-in screen. No TV needed. Man, this is a big box. I'd actually have to put the camcorder through the wall to show the whole thing, I think. Right, a bit of blurb quickly. The Vectrex computer game system is an astounding breakthrough. An entirely new home entertainment system that is independent of the home TV, blah, blah, blah. Is that a major selling point for Dad? You're not going to take over the telly while you play with it and it'll keep you quiet upstairs? Hmm... I imagine that was something behind it. Vectrex comes with its own fast-paced game, Mindstorm. Wow. Yes, it literally has a built-in game. Uh, very rarely do consoles do that. I think there was a Sega Master System released with Alex Kidd in it. Uh, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Anyway, let's have a look at some games. <sighs> look at this. The fast-expanding Vectrex... Sorry, you can't see this bit. You'll have to believe me, it's there, honest. The fast-expanding Vectrex game library comprises a range of arcade favourites such as Scramble, Berserk, and Armour, Attack, which is really strangely punctuated with lots of ellipses in, as well as brand new games that are sure to become greats in their own right. And more to come. Yeah, if you're using advertising, don't put inverted commas around greats. That does not make things sound good. Go on, what games have we got then? Blitz, some sort of American football thing going on. Uh, version of Berserk, classic arcade game. What is that? Armor Attack, that's an old arcade game. Clean Sweep, but is that an old arcade game? I assume it is. It looks like one. And Starhawk, ooh, nifty spaceships. Starship, oh, you get to fly your own spaceship, look, amazing. Space Wars. Can't see what's going on there at all. But I do know, because I played it years ago. Cosmic Chasm. Wow. Not just any old chasm. Hyper Chase. Oh, this was excellent. Really good uh, car racing game. I think that was my friend's favourite back in the day. Can't remember. Solar Quest. Can you find the sun? Hmm. Probably quite an easy quest as it goes. Scramble. That was a really good version of Scramble, I think. Unfortunately, I don't have it, so you can't see it. Up yours. Rip Off. Hmm. Got a copy of that here. Now, this is an old arcade game ripoff, whereby you're trying to protect some sort of triangles in the middle of the screen that nasty alien types are coming to steal for some reason. And, you know, with my psychology hat on, I do question the intelligence of releasing something called ripoff next to a very expensive games console you're trying to convince people to buy for their children. It's not something you want to plant in their minds. Not a good phrase. Bedlam! No idea what that is. Loads of weird shit flying about. Oh, it's called Bedlam, what do you expect? Fortress of Narzod? Hmm, it's a new one on me. Flip Out, that's some sort of pinball action. Web Warp, also known as Web Wars, I believe. Um, again, don't have a copy of this, but I do vaguely remember it. It was very odd. You sort of flew down into the screen shooting at things and then had to, like, capture birds or something bizarre like that. Um, Spike, oh, we'll come on to Spike. And, I can't read that, Heads Up, isn't it? Yeah, I think Heads Up. 
Some sort of soccer game? Not entirely sure. Also, don't entirely care. Let's have a look at the unit itself. Whoa! Sudden jump cut in order to fit the whole thing in frame. Well, nearly the whole thing. It's old and it's scuffed and it cost me way too much. It's the Vectrex! You can tell by the way it says Vectrex on it twice. Mmm, subtle. Right, you've also got the MB logo for Milton Bradley, who distributed it in the UK, and I believe mostly in America. A uh, different company distributed it first. Can't remember who. Uh, might have been, yeah, I think it was GCE, actually. Who cares? That's not fun. Let's look at the monitor instead. Um, as we said, it's a CRT geared up for vector graphics. It's black and white and about 9 by 11 inches. Yeah, black and white, I said. Don't you remember the screenshots on the side of the box, which were in colour? How can it possibly be advertising games in colour with a black and white monitor? Here's a hint. Colour plastic overlays. We'll come back to those shortly. Yum. Right, the unit itself has all its controls hidden away under this little panel. Which is probably going to be very difficult to get out. Oh no, that's easy enough. Plop. It's the controller! and the horrible wire that connects it to the unit, and also some buttons in there as well. Uh, looking at these first, you've got a hold stick in a second controller for two-player frolics, a reset button, and a combination on-off switch and volume control. <sighs> the excitement. Here is the controller itself, a sort of little nubby joystick which just feels a bit stiff and odd. You've got four buttons in a really uncomfortable setting, that means you've got to have quite large hands to play with it properly. Not good when it's aimed at children. Silly, silly. And it's made in Hong Kong. <coughs> Thanks for that. One of the problems with the Vectrex actually is that the joystick on it doesn't tend to last too long. So uh, if you are thinking of picking one of these up second hand, check the controller. Because I've no new ones of the controller to go for more than the whole unit. Mm. Also, if you're wondering where the cartridges go in, they slot in at the side here. Ding, ding, ding. Standard ROM cartridge type thing. Even though, irritatingly, it says on the Vectrex box, Vectrex has a wide variety of challenging and exciting game cassettes. Even though this is clearly a ROM cartridge, not a cassette. A cassette, by definition, has a spool of magnetic tape or photographic film in. Why do these small things annoy me so much? Oh yeah, because I'm an idiot. Right, I think we're going to have to show this running, really, aren't we? Bear with me while I... Blimey. Um, <laughs> how to show a Vectrex display on a modern camcorder. Uh, what could possibly go right? Right, I'm going to dim the lights and spend a lot of time playing with manual focus. See you in a minute. Oh, spooky! It's all gone dark. Yep, the lights are off, the curtains are closed, the roof is on fire. Should probably sort that out, but hey, let's get this thing filmed first. The exposure of the camera is at the absolute end of its spectrum, so if this doesn't look good, there's nothing else I can do. Sorry, use your imagination. As you may have noticed, I'm stalling for time because I can't find the bloody on switch. <laughs> this is the problem with it being dark. Oh, got it. Ready? Go! Vectrex! Notice how the text is made out of lines, because of course, Vector Monitor only does lines. Ominous. Player one. Ooh, we can probably zoom in a bit, actually. Let's do that, shall we? There we are. Right, this bastard goes down laying all these mines. Our job is to rip off asteroids. I mean, our job is to destroy them all. Notice how incredibly smooth the movement is. This was so impressive for 1982, you couldn't believe it. Bang, bang, shootings. Eat my small dots, evil mine things. As with all the early levels of Asteroid games, you generally just sit in the middle and shoot. I seem to remember actually you had the panic teleport, is that correct? Nope. Ah, here we are. Yee. Do that too often, I'll land on one. Then I won't look so clever. Right. Let's do some new things quickly. Oh! Some unidentified flying bastard there trying to lay new mines. How dare he? Right. This is getting irritating. Shoot it. Yes! Brilliant! Now I'm exploding. Hmm, that'll teach me to win. And every time Mr. Swine, like some crazy local council official, goes and drops mines everywhere and uh, you have to shoot them. The X mines home in on you. They are magnetic. Also evil. Anyway, I'm sure you get the idea. And more to the point, how the graphics look. And now, time for colour as we put on the clear plastic overlay. 
at least I would if I could see what I was doing. Here we are. Wow, that's amazing. It doesn't look uh, anything like it does on the video camera in real life. Actually, it does just look blue in real life. And you haven't got this weird halo effect going on. Hmm. Obviously, they didn't have uh, futuristic camcorders in mind when they made the Vectrex. Who would have thought? Ooh, mustn't obscure the screen. That's just confusing. Anyway, Mindstorm is actually a really good game. Massively hampered by the fact there's a bloody bug in it, which means it's impossible to get past level 13. Very, very irritating. Apparently, if you wrote off to Milton Bradley and said, Oi, I can't get off level 13 on Mindstorm, you swines, they would then send you a cartridge marked Mindstorm 2, which was a fixed version of the game. Hmm. However, they didn't advertise that they were doing that, so very few people actually did, and as a result, Mindstorm 2 is probably the rarest game for the system. The cheeky blighters. Right, I'd better put another game in quickly, because it's just dark and spooky for anybody watching. Ooh, maybe I'll splice in a picture of a kitten. There we are. Now everybody feels better. Right, what games will we go for? Um, go on then. Berserk. Into the cartridge slot at the side. On it goes. And wait for the little music. Marvellous. What happened to branding when you turn on consoles, eh? <laughs> oh yeah, they all have it now. Right. Wow! What is it with weird, beepy, dramatic music on these things? Right, go on then. Let's run around and shoot the monsters. Hmm. Animation not fantastic on the little chap there, but it plays quite nicely. Don't touch the walls. I seem to remember that was the trick in Berserk. Oh, that's Evil Otto, isn't it? He comes on after a while and kills you because you spent too long on the same screen. He's like a really over-agitated cleaner. Right. Shoot. Shoot. All the buttons shoot. It's very good if you like pressing different buttons to shoot. Who made these robots? They're walking into walls all the time. Bloody idiots. Oh dear. This is, uh, this is problematic. I wanted to go through the top, but Otto wouldn't let me. Ooh, slightly flickery aliens or robot things. Probably can't see it flickering on the cam. Gonna take my word for it. Do you know, I can't actually remember the point of Berserk. Was it just to amass score? Were you going somewhere specific? We going to the shops to get tea bags? I've got no idea. This is a bit sort of pedestrian and dull by today's standards, really. Oh, I wonder if I've got this acetate thing for it. It's hard to tell in the dark. I'll tell you what, I'll use the torch. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, I have. How incredibly exciting. Wow, somebody's really throwing a strop on that. Oh, I don't believe it, it's just blue again. What is this thing with the different coloured things just being plain blue? That's just boring. Never game. Up yours. Okay, let's fiddle with the cartridges. And there we are, that's in the side. This is the game I have the best memories of. I used to play when my friend had one. It is called Spike and features the adventures of Spike, presumably. I don't actually know the story. I've got the manual. Maybe I should have a look. Hmm, we'll do that while we're playing. Right, turn her on. Wait for the three notes of ultimate joy. Dun dun dun. Ah, it takes me back. Well, it would do if my memory wasn't shot anyway. Well, that was a bit jollier than usual. Spike! Now, if there's something very interesting about Spike, it has speech. There we are. That's what a cutscene was in 1982. I think I like them more than modern ones. Right, Spike has to progress up the screen. And river dance. Okay, Spike, up we go. There's a slightly bizarre gameplay mechanic whereby pressing one of the buttons makes the bloody ladder teleport. Enabling you to then climb up it. Very strange. Ooh, go and get the key. Hey! Now you have to jump into the cage, which is presumably where Molly is kept. And everybody's super excited. Damn you, evil Spud Man! I think that's what the villain was called, evil Spud Man. That rings, rings a bell. Right, now there's some weird box thing going on. That's just annoying. Oh, I've forgotten I can actually control that. Oh, there's a bow. Get that. Time stops for the Eveltons. Oh, he has fallen! And will never be the same again, except he immediately is. Right, 
up here. Come on. We're going to do this. Get the key. Do you, I remember a cheat for this. Hang on. I think, yeah, if you put it, the cage in the far left position by repeatedly pressing the relocate button. No, that isn't how you do it. There was a way he would die, and you'd also go on to the next level somehow, and you'd like get loads of score and go up like 15 difficulty levels at once. Can't for the life of me remember what it was. Let's just do some dancing. <laughs> my main memory of this game was my friend mucking around at the back of the unit and somehow shorting out like the controls for the controller. And as a result, Spike would just leap about and flail his limbs and then fall to his death. And it sounded exactly like this. Doon, 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 darn it! Repeatedly. And it was the funniest thing in the world when we were eight. Whereas now we're old, it would only be the second funniest thing in the world. Well, this is Spike. I would do it. What lovely voices they don't have. Why is the colour overlay? I hope it isn't just a bloody blue one again. No, it's a purple one. <laughs> it probably looks blue on the camcorder. Yes, it does. Very blue console, the Vectrex, apparently. Right, let's turn this off a second. Ooh, I'm going to turn on the torch. And I'm going to read from the Book of Spike and see what the plot to this game was. Sorry it's going to be dark for this, I'll splice it in a picture of a dog in a hat. There we go. Right. <clears throat> Our lovely and innocent heroine Molly has been kidnapped by the evil Spud. Oh, I thought it was the evil Spud man. It's my childhood ruined. Anyway, you will hear her cry, Eek! Help Spike! as he drags her away. Only Spike can save her from this awful fate. As soon as Spike kicks open the door to the villain Spud's hideaway, shouting, Oh no! Molly! The game field appears. Spike enters on the bottom catwalk, and then you have control of him. You in bold, just to show you how excited you should be. After your first round, you will face Spud's evil bouncers, Spike's worst enemies. Hang on, I thought the evil Spud was his worst enemy. He keeps stealing his girlfriend and running through weird doors with her. That's a pretty evil thing to be doing. Oh well... Who are we to uh, gaze into the mind of Spike? Anyway, they'll do anything to keep Spike away from Molly's secret prison cell. Right, two problems here. Again, Molly's prison cell isn't secret, it's at the top of the bloody screen, and Spike himself can make it appear and disappear into different locations at will. And secondly, they've bolded the word anything, which is a bit creepy. They'll do anything to keep Spike away. Yeah, even that. <laughs> anyway, I don't think there's anything else exciting in here. Nope, let's stop reading that now. It was frankly disappointing. Go on, one more game, why not? I choose Starship, which is a game I can't really remember. I must have played it uh, when I was testing the Vectrex. Oh well, nothing's going to stop us now. <laughs> uh, sorry. Right, let's get in the cartridge slot. I haven't got the instructions or the overlay for this one, so uh, I hope I remember how to play it. On it goes. Oh, just knocked the camcorder, that's not going to help. Come on, where's the power cords? Ah, life affirming. What's the intro ditty like? Like a keyboard falling down the stairs, apparently. Right, player one, game one. That sounds good to me. Let's see what happens. Ready? Oh, I like it when it calls me captain. Oh, I don't like it when it calls me sector. Right, what's going on? Oh, look, there's some ships that look a bit Klingon y, but probably aren't for copyright reasons. Shoot them, they explode. There's a mushroom, that explodes as well. Right, getting a sort of uh, Star Wars the arcade game rip-off vibe here. Just with more Klingons. Sorry, not Klingons. Oh yeah, look, they even fire the uh, same shots as the Star Wars arcade game. Unfortunately, my joystick got stuck there and I couldn't move down to shoot it out of the air. Providing you can actually shoot it out of the air. Right, what other buttons have we got? Right, what on earth does that do? Makes your crosshair go funny and makes a horrible blurping noise. That's just confusing. Oh, there's the wibbly square button. What on earth is that? Oh, it's, has it summoned that? What is this? Oh. Was that a good thing? Have I won? Am I the master of the universe? Nope. Oh dear, it's a different ship. Oh. What? Is that a multiple thing? Is it a boss? I'm very confused by all this. Ready, Captain. I don't think I'll ever be ready. I really don't know what's going on. Right, shoot the things. Is that a missile? What? What, what do these buttons do? Oh, that one's pause. That's something. 
I'm very confused, but oh. Replay any key. This is a games console, it doesn't have any bloody keys. Right, that's enough of that. As it turns out, I don't have any of the good games. How incredibly irritating. I seem to recall, actually, the best games were the ones where you were shooting into the screen and the background was flying past and I don't have any of those. Humph. But there are some good games out there, honest. And that is why I have ordered, from France of all places, a magic new fangled super cartridge that you plug into the side of the old Vectrex and it contains all the games ever released and including some unreleased prototypes, and even including some homebrew stuff, so I'm quite looking forward to that arriving. Actually, when it does, I'll uh, make a bonus midweek video thing, because that'll be a laugh, wouldn't it? Yeah. Something else you've got to mention by law when you talk about the Vectrex are the two bizarre add-ons it had. I don't know if either of these were ever released in the UK. Um, I don't think they were massively successful due to their absolutely terrifying price tags. But there's a light pen, which enables you to draw on the screen, and some software to enable you to do that. Um, massive excitement. But far more excitingly is the ultra-rare and massively expensive now 3D headset thing. Here's a photo I took of it in a museum. Yes, that's how rare it is. I had to get a photo in a bloody museum. Science Museum in London on the Touring Game On exhibition, if you care, trivia fans. Anyway, what it did was span a disc in front of your eyes really quickly. That doesn't sound great, but it was synced into the screen, which not only gave it a completely 3D effect, which was mighty impressive in the early 80s, but also could make the games look as if they were in colour, which is fairly impressive. I do wonder, actually, if the um, sort of colour and 3D effects were actually just brought on by having a spinning disc in front of your eyes that vaguely hypnotised you and gave you neck ache until you were hallucinating, but I don't have one to try that theory out with. So there you have it, that be the Vectrex, one of the most interesting consoles released in the early 80s, and I believe the only console ever released which can cause permanent retina damage if played on even a moderate brightness setting for too long. Yep, somebody told me that, and I looked into it, and it's true, apparently. That's a really horrifying thought. I don't know how you would get around that. Um, make sure you play it in a well-lit room on a relatively low brightness. Um, don't play it for very long periods. Wear dark glasses. How about you get a friend to look at the screen while you look the other way, and then you react based on what he tells you? Yeah, that sounds great. But hey, at least it doesn't make you vomit your guts up like the virtual boy. <laughs>